I don't want to hear any bullshit about me being me. All right? So here it goes. And this is Cosmopolitan. And this was uh, posted today. So and here we go. Okay? Here it goes. Here it is. Okay, here it goes. Here it is. <laughs> yes, porns do have costume designers. Brian Armstrong and Jessica Drake don't just produce, write, direct, and star in adult films for Wicked Pictures. They also design the costumes. Cosmopolitan.com style editor Charles Manning spoke on the phone with them about what it's like designing costumes for films where actors spend most of their time more or less naked. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, you guys. <laughs> this is horrible. I, I know. I, I'm the great white shark circling around a bunch of naked girls uh, in the shoreline uh, of the beach. All right. Uh, how did you get started in porn, Brad Armstrong? I was a male stripper. <laughs> okay. I was a male. <laughs> I was Nick the Dick from Bachelor Party. <laughs> All right. I was a male stripper putting myself through college for commercial advertising. Another porn person going to college. I'll tell you, college has never produced more people in the porn business, I swear. <laughs> I got into porn from there. First as a performer, and then as a director, writer, and producer. And now, I'm on contract with Wicked Picture. <laughs> oh my God, that's just, listen to that. I mean, I, I shot Brad in a gangbang in 1997. So, uh, I got to give Brad... A little defense here, okay? <laughs> You're talking about, what, 16 years ago, 17 years ago? And the way this interview sounds, it was like, I was a male stripper putting myself through college. And then I got into porn from there. And first as a performer, and then as a director, writer, producer, and now I'm a contract with Wicked Pictures! <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it just happened in a span of like two years. And the last uh, thing I ever remember about Brad Armstrong and his uh, uh, performing days was it was very short-lived until he was with Wicked Pictures and with a guy, I think his name was Greg Steele. And they uh, made Pirates, I think it was. Or, no, Conquest. They made a movie, Conquest. Uh, and, again, I, that was with Jenna Jamie. I mean, we're talking about, as long as I remember Brad Armstrong, he's always been associated with Wicked. So this is kind of a little deceiving. So i got to back my man Brad up there, uh, even though it does sound funnier to just say, I was a male stripper and putting myself through college. And then I got into porn from there. First as a performer, then as a director, writer, producer, and now I'm on a contract with Wicked! <laughs> it's just so gay. Anyways, and then it goes to Jessica Drake, who says, I was going to college in El Paso, Texas. Mine on! Another college girl. <laughs> and I was stripping. I did some magazine shoots out in California. 
and fell in with a great group of people who worked in the porn industry. They took me onto the set of an adult film, and it was nothing like I thought it would be. Six months after that, I made my first movie. After a few years, I started writing, which turned into directing, and now I'm the creator and director of Jessica Drake's Guide to Wicked Sex, which is an instructional line of sex ed movies. Again, it's just really bizarre because she cuts out uh, this path that she was on, which was married to Evan Stone. Uh, and she was nothing more than just a uh, performer. And uh, it wasn't until she got with Brad Armstrong uh, did she become really prominent in that company because Brad was already a big shot with Wicked. So Brad basically took this girl, Jessica Drake, who is a really boring fuck, who wasn't really that uh, attractive, at least not more attractive than a lot of the other girls at the time, and he made her a star, like he made Jenna Jameson a star. Uh, so uh, it's kind of funny how everybody kind of skips their history, and the fact that Brad uh, basically stole Jessica from Evan Stone. And uh, Evan Stone was with Jessica Drake. They were married. And Jessica Drake was cheating on Evan with Brad. <laughs> so uh, just a little funny uh, tidbit factoid uh, that is there. Not a big deal. Not making fun of anybody. We all have history. But I'm just trying to put it in perspective because this article makes uh, Jessica and Brad uh, sound like they're a bunch of newbies who just started in the adult business, you know, uh, three years ago. Uh, so Cosmetown asked Brad Armstrong, when did you start designing costumes for adult films? And Brad says, when I was stripping, it was tough to find good costumes. So Brad saying when he was a male stripper and he would go into stores trying to find costumes so he could wear when he was dancing in the clubs, uh, he was having a really tough time finding them. <laughs> oh, I know I'm the shark and I'm just eating my sea lions right now. I'm sorry. Oh. oh, man. So Brad says, when I was stripping, it was tough to find good costumes. So I bought a sewing machine and made my own stuff. And everybody was like, oh, that's so cool. That's fabulous. Jesus Christ, Brad, you made some of the coolest fucking costumes in the world. <laughs> oh, I mean, you guys, he's literally saying that as a male stripper, uh, he would go into stores and realize that there were uh, no good costumes. And so he said, fuck this, I'm going to go buy a sewing machine, and I'm going to snap to it and make my own costumes. And as he started making his costumes, he showed up in the club with, like, a new sparkly fireman's outfit on, and all the other male strippers went, oh, my God, that is so fucking cool, Brad. Oh, my God, could you make me a costume? And so Brad started making other costumes for other strippers. That's what he meant by a kind of was a lucrative business. So there's Brad Armstrong with a tape measure measuring out guys' fucking sacks and making sure that these costumes would fit these dudes good. Oh my god. I know, I'm just eating, I've eaten like eight sea lions already. I'm burping, and they're going, I thought you weren't going to eat us. 
And I'm like, I can't help myself! I'm sorry! Oh, God! Oh, Jesus Christ! Let me say this again. I was stripping, and it was tough to find good costumes. And then I bought a sewing machine and made my own stuff. And then everybody was like, oh, that's so cool. And it turned into kind of a lucrative business. I would make costumes during the day and dance at night. And I was making as much money from the costumes as I was from dancing. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so sorry, Brad. I'm so sorry. You can't give me this type of stuff and expect me not to just fucking torment you. Come on. Uh, you know this is the same guy that hung around with Rocco Reed. And he was part of their inner circle. And then Rocco Reed idled to was like, hey guys, I'm gay. I'm going to go do gay movies. And Brad was like, you betrayed me. I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. You guys got to stop giving me this stuff. Seriously, stop giving me this stuff. All right? Stop it. You guys got to stop giving me this stuff. Whew. Okay. Um, oh, God. Um, oh, Jesus. Okay, here it is. Um, when I started making movies, and the things we wore were so embarrassing, I put some money together to make my own movie called Checkmate, and I made the costumes for that. The set was a giant chessboard, and the actors were all chess pieces. Touché, Brad. Touché. And Jessica then said, I was making a movie with Brad called The Collector. He took me to all the wardrobe places with him, so I could try everything on. But then I was helping him choose things for other characters as well. And from there, I just started helping him out with stuff. I'm the assistant, though. He's the visionary. Oh, <laughs> Oh, God. Axel Braun's making these fucking $100,000 movies. And Brad Armstrong and Jessica Drake are making their own costumes for their movies. Okay, come on now. I gotta stop. Because I'm, I'm never gonna have any friends. I'm gonna have no friends. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Whew. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to continue. I, ca I can't riff on that any more than what is just riffed on. What makes for a good porn costume, Brad? Easy in and easy out. Uh, 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 but I also like clothes we can leave on during the sex, like a short skirt as opposed to pants, and a top with buttons as opposed to pullover. We especially need that easy access with period pieces. Big flowing gowns and stuff. No one-piece gowns, though. You need to be able to get the skirt off. But leave the, uh, uh, leave the bow dice on to maintain the period piece feel. Once everyone is naked, you lose the characters. 
Uh, there you go. I, I can't agree with Brad any more than that. I can't make fun of Brad uh, at all for that. He's dead on, and everything he just said, I've also echoed, uh, and I've also uh, made that uh, uh, a mandatory for any movie th that I ever did that involved costumes. Uh, once you took the costumes off, you basically just had people uh, naked uh, having sex, and it's the same people that you could see in a Brazzers movie, or you could see in an Elegant Angel movie, or you could see in any other uh, piece of shit movie that's out there that just involves naked people fucking. So, uh, there you go. Good, good answer, Brad. Can't make fun of you there. And then Cosmo asks, which celebrity do you think has the best wardrobe for porn? And Jessica answers, Lady Gaga. Those shoes. I was a big fan of hers right before the music video for Telephone came out. And I was actually in that music video. I was pretty much enthralled with everything she did back then. And it was a period where she hadn't quite gone over the top with that meat dress. Okay. Uh, very good. And um, we move on uh, to a next question. Uh, I'm getting an update from Katie Summers. She said she doesn't think the show even started yet because she's been checking but haven't seen any... Uh, Winners. Haven't seen anything yet. Uh, if there's other reports to that, somebody please tell me. But right now, Katie Summers can't seem to find any winners yet. Uh. Um, Cosmopolitan asks Brad, what kind of budget are you guys working with? Brad says smaller movies can be anywhere between 1000 and 2000 and the bigger ones maybe around 5000 uh, that's pretty small. Um, I guarantee you an Axel Braun um, costume budget uh, is uh, 10000 Seriously, I know uh, all the superhero movies and, and parodies we did, uh, our budgets were more than 2000 I mean, our Iron Man costume alone was, fuck, I think it was $4,000. Our uh, Captain American outfit uh, was seven hundred dollars. Uh, I mean, our cost—that's kind of Jesus Christ. Brad's really getting the fucking short end of the stick on his stuff. Uh, and then the cosmetologist asks Brad, "Have you uh, had any formal sewing or design training?" And Brad says, "Self-taught, pretty much." <laughs> And he asked Brad, where do you get the clothes that you don't make yourself? And Brad says, we don't have the budgets to go brand shopping, and designers aren't so eager to loan for adult films. But we shop in the fashion district in L.A., and we use the same costume house as people in TV and the film industry. And the uh, interviewer asks, do the costume houses know you're using the clothes in the adult films? And Brad says, I have one in particular Western costume, which we all use. And that's been very good to me over the years. They are very receptive and uh, courteous to us at Wicked Pictures, but not everyone is like that. Uh, yes, we've uh, used uh, uh, Western costume uh, on more than one occasion also. Uh, that's, uh, uh, they used to, uh, well, we used to, they're still there. They uh, have a place in North Hollywood. And uh, our offices that were in North Hollywood that we eventually got raided at, and so forth and so on, uh, that uh, was the uh, office that was right next to, um, uh, that was the office that was right next to Western Costume. So uh, that, my friends, is something that uh, I can vouch uh, for Brad Armstrong on. All right. Uh, do the costumes, uh, what do you do with the costumes after you're done? Uh, they ask Brad. And Brad says if we rented them, they dry, get dry cleaned and take them back to the costume houses. And the interviewer asks, do the dry cleaners know where the clothes are coming from? And 
And Brad says, we have a cute little dry cleaner down the street that knows exactly who we are and has our 8x10s hanging on the wall of fame. And Jessica uh, quotes and says, I would like to add that he signed his 8x10. Thanks for getting the stains out. Ha 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 ha. And Jessica and Brad are pretty witty. Uh, is staining an issue, Cosmo Tomlinson asks. Brad says, for the most part, the clothes are off by the time there's any staining going on, so we don't have any Bill Clinton moments. Monica Lewinsky moments, depending on how you'd be looking at it. Another witty, uh, comical reference. Do you have any pro tips to get semen stains out of clothes, Brad? And he says, it depends on what the garment is made out of. For the most part, I soak them and then scrub them with a toothbrush. <laughs> An old toothbrush. I save all my old toothbrushes for that. So Brad Armstrong is cleaning people's jizz <laughs> out of costumes. <laughs> what the fuck am I reading? <laughs> I mean, really, Brad Armstrong is sitting there with a whole bunch of costumes that got jizz in them. And he's scrubbing them with his old toothbrush. I gotta get these jizz stains out. So Brad's sitting there handling other people's jizz. What the fuck am I reading? This seriously. And then Jessica chimes in. I will run them through a rinse or a delicate cycle at home. If there's the potential for disaster, I've thrown an entire business suit into a bag and put it through the delicate cycle. Then I take it straight to the dry cleaner the next day. How do you plan your costumes, Jessica? And Jessica says, I love Pinterest. Occasionally for things I wear on the red carpet, I make a vision board. I make it private board, though, because I don't want people scooping me. And they ask Brad, what designer inspires you? And Brad says, I'm not so much a designer guy. I'm more of a concept guy. And Jessica says, I like Alexandra McQueen, but I don't really follow any designers. And then uh, they say to Brad, what's your favorite porn genre for costuming? And Brad says, sci-fi. It's always futuristic, but sometimes it's high-tech and crisp. And other times it's post-apocalyptic. And then Jessica says, I like fantasy a lot. And that's why their big next opus is some snooze fest about a guy in an old shitty car uh, traveling to meet uh, an old shitty lady that used to date his old shitty dead dad. Yeah, so they're making an old, shitty romance movie, uh, and both of them love sci-fi and fantasy. Gee, once again, who got the shitty end of the budget, and uh, who's regarded as the crappy director now, and who's regarded as the greatest director since sliced bread? Axel Braun, Sleeping Beauty, Wicked Pictures, okay? Uh, what movie do you think shows your best work as a costumer? Curse, Eternal, or Eternity? And Brad says, uh, I got to go with her on Eternity. It was a period piece, but some of the most extravagant costumes we made were for fuck. It was kind of a history of sex, so it went from barbarians to period old English to sci-fi. And some of the pieces were really cool. We also did one of the Indian goddess Shiva with all the arms. That was tricky. Again, this is what Brad and Jessica, and then it shows these pictures that Brad and Jessica have done and these elaborate costumes. Literally, these elaborate costumes. Uh, it even talks about, uh, it says, Brad, what was your kinkiest costume ever made? And he says, in Underworld, we had this Edward Scissorhands guy on stilts. So he was like 12 feet tall, and the girl who was uh, fellatioing, uh, fellatioing him was rolling around in a metal thing with no legs. That was the most interesting of late. Uh, so the, he goes from that movie once again. 
he goes from that movie of a guy on 12 foot stilts uh, with scissor hands and getting a blowjob from a girl with no legs on a metal pedestal. And that is a uh, movie that he just did. And his follow up to that is once again an old shitty car, an old shitty girl, a bunch of old shitty letters about an old shitty dead dad. Okay, once again, who's getting the awesome budgets and who's getting a big dildo up their ass? I know it's not Axel Braun. Anyways, uh, do the actors who work with you weigh in on the costume to refuse to wear something? And Brad says, not really. If they think they look fat or something, I just kind of talk them off the ledge and say, trust me. And usually it works out. I've never had anything go, oh my God, you made me look horrible. Of course not, because Brad goes, you look fabulous! <laughs> Brad goes, you look fabulous! You look fucking scrumptious. Uh, and then we have, do the actors who work with you weigh in on the costumes? Oh, my bad, I read that already. Is there anything you think women can learn about dressing from adult film? And Brad says, well, it depends on which ones you watch. Some of the girls in films are in atrocious outfits and sometimes overly sexy isn't sexy. Sometimes the subtle of an outfit is what makes it sexy. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was painful. That was... Painful. I must stress right now, Brad, I'm sorry. All right? I'm fucking sorry about uh, having to do that piece. I'm sorry uh, that I had to make fun of that piece. I'm fucking sorry. And once I say I'm sorry, I should be forgiven of all my sins. <laughs> Okay? Once I've said I'm fucking sorry, uh, I should be forgiven of all my sins. So, I'm going to uh, start that article off with saying, Brad, I'm sorry, forgive me. And then once the article's done, uh, at the end it will say, Brad, again, I'm sorry. And two sorries definitely are forgiven for all sins. So, uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the funniest pieces that I have read. Whew, God, that was just unbelievably uh, funny. All right, so it's 9.23. The award show started at 8 o'clock. I cannot believe we don't have any updates on any fucking winners. Seriously? I mean, really, guys? Is this... Uh, is this real? Seriously, you guys, is this fucking real? Am, am I seriously? Uh, am I seriously uh, hearing this that we have no information on any winners? I mean, seriously. Are we seriously not getting any? Uh, uh, answers about this? Seriously. <sighs> Again, well, why... <laughs> why am I not getting uh, and uh, 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 why am I not getting a goddamn uh, 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 answer of what is going on? Huh? Why am I not getting any information? Huh? Why am I not giving any information 
on who is where. Why? Why am I not getting uh, any fucking <laughs> responses? I even went to Bill Markle's Twitter to see if he's got any updates. And here's his only update five hours ago. Poor Stuperman and his boy blunders lame attempt at mocking XRCO30 merely reflects their realization that they are a truly classless act. How the fuck are we uh, uh, mocking the XRCO awards? What we've paid more, we've given more attention to this stupid fucking award show than any of the other fucking media outlets. Seriously. Uh, Mike South hasn't talked about the XRCO yet. Luke is back, hasn't talked about the XRCO. Uh, LukeFord.com hasn't talked about the XRCO. Uh, uh, XBiz has put out two press releases. ABN has put out a press release. How the fuck, you know, isn't that something? Even when you're doing something and, and getting the word out about somebody's event, you get fucking your balls busted about it. I'm literally looking at ABN, and I don't see anywhere on ABN's website do they say, don't forget, guys, tonight is the XRCO Awards. I don't fucking see nothing on ABN saying, tonight is the XRCO Award. Nowhere. All day today, we've been looking on uh, the uh, uh, ABN.com. Here, I'm looking at it again. Vivid Radio, Finland, Slot Woman, Girlfriend Films, Bonnie Ryan, Jessica Drake, a fucking documentary, Pop Porn, Vivid Video, uh, Fanny's Presented. I'm seeing, okay, here we go. April 10th, XRC Awards next week, RSVP. I don't see a fucking advertisement or a mention for the goddamn XRCO Awards tonight. Nowhere. And Bill Margo busts our balls. Is that just a fucking douchebag? Seriously. Is that just a fucking douchebag or what? Think about it, man. Nobody else in this fucking business is talking about a shitty fucking awards show. Except us. AVN.com hasn't mentioned his shitty fucking award show all fucking day. We do, and five hours ago, Bill Marco breaks balls. Is that just a, a, a just a miserable, jealous old douchebag? Seriously, go to Xbiz. Guys, I, I'm not lying. I'm not fucking lying as normal. I tell the fucking truth, and what happens? Nobody can dispute it because I'm telling the fucking truth. Go to XBiz, okay? Go to fucking XBiz right now. Go to fucking XBiz, all right, you fucking motherfuckers. Go to fucking XBiz and do the same thing. I'm looking at XBiz right now, and guess what? Nowhere today. Am I seeing any talk about the XRCO award show that's tonight? Nowhere am I seeing talking about the XRCO award show tonight. I see Steve Hirsch's roundtable fucking meeting. I see Kelly Shibari named Fat Fuck. I see Exquisite Multimedia and DDF Productions. I see Lisa Ann featuring, okay, uh, all right, do you fucking believe this? Do you fucking believe this? Are you guys following me? I just got news that uh, 
the last time taxi well I guess the, uh, uh, the, the, the when taxi driver won when whatever year it won at the XRCO they didn't get the award until 1130 so uh, 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 well, that's what we're getting anyway back to that scumbag Bill Marco <laughs> think about this XBiz fucking XBiz hasn't mentioned XRCO all day, but who does? We do. We put it in a routine yesterday and today. And what do we get from Bill Marco five hours ago? Poor Superman and his boy blunders, lame attempt at mocking XRCO 30, merely reflects the realization that they are truly classless act. All right, hey, Marco. Rather we, uh, motherfucker, we're talking about the XRCO. We've made two stories about it. Whether you want to say we're mocking it or not, what's worse, us talking about it and having fun with some of our friends that are nominated or for the entire industry's media uh, machine? to completely ignore your pathetic ass and your pathetic award show. Which one is classless, you cocksucker? Seriously, Marco, you fucking cocksucker. What is more classless, okay? The fact that Rob Black and Tom Byron and Adult FYI, we have uh, written stories about the XRC award show, that is tonight, uh, or AVN and XBiz who will not even acknowledge that you fucking exist tonight, Bill Margo. Which one's more classless, you fucking cockroach? What a fucking asshole you are. Seriously, bro. You're just a fucking dumb asshole. Seriously. You are just a fucking dumb asshole. Straight up, man. You are a dumb fucking asshole. We're classless because we talked about your show and actually trying to get information about the show. We're making predictions about the show. We're talking about lining up uh, winners from the show and talking about them. We're actually drawing more attention to the XRCO awards than ever in the history of the things been in existence. And we're classless. But AVN hasn't mentioned you at all today, and either has XBiz. Who's more classless, Bill? The two magazine and two websites of the adult industry, and one of them being the Bible. Okay? One of them being the Bible. Or us, who've talked about your stupid fucking award show. Jesus Christ. You've got to be the biggest, dumbest, douchiest asshole living. You you got to be, man. You really got to be. Seriously, man. You got to be. Fuck. It really is unbelievable at how much of an asshole you are. Truly classless act oh, by mocking the XRCO, mocking. Bill, we're talking about your show. XBiz, they're not. AVN, they're not. I don't give a shit that they put a press release out three days ago. Today! Today is the event, you stupid motherfucker. Today is the event. Tonight, it's going on. Today is the day that you would want the press to talk about your fucking event. Uh, do you get that, you stupid fuck? Today is the day that you would want a publicity blitz on the event. And what did we do today? We did a publicity blitz on your event. Did XBiz? Nope. Did AVN? Nope. So fuck you, Bill, you stupid motherfucker. 
Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. Man. Unfucking believable. That's all I can say. Unfucking believable. We're getting ready for news that we can use with Katie Sarge. I just hit up uh, the two uh, uh, prospective award winners here and said, What the fuck? Any updates, motherfucker? Got any fucking updates? Jesus Christ. It's 9.30 already. So fucking updates. Got to do the fucking news, for Christ's sakes. Give me some fucking updates. Fucking guys are killing me, man. Fuck. Man, you know, normally Bill Marble don't piss me off because he's just a, a bitter fucking nobody. And I find what he says amusing. But literally, when he says that us talking about something that nobody else in the industry is, uh, and he's shitting on that, that bothers me. Because it, it really is retarded, considering that nobody else is talking about his worthless fucking show. Nobody talked about his show today, and nobody talked his sh about his show yesterday. Seriously. Nobody has talked about his show in days. Nobody has talked about his show in days. And today, uh, we've been talking about it. And yesterday, we've been talking about it. Fucking guy, man. Seriously, the guy is just a fucking jerk-off. Mocking the show is a real classless act. Classless act? Asshole. AVN and XBiz aren't even talking about you. I would rather have somebody talking bad about me for two days in a row than have somebody not talk about me at all. I'd rather have somebody talk about my event and make fun of it and give... And again, we, we weren't even making fun of it. We're giving out predictions. If you read the article, we're talking about Axel Braun and talking about uh, Jeff Mullen. We're talking about these great directors. We never told people, don't go. We never told people uh, anything of the sort. We never talked shit on the award show. We literally gave our predictions, and then we literally talked about who should win and why they are the greatest of the greats. That's what we did. And Bill Margold says we're mocking it. While AVN doesn't talk about it, they tell Bill to go fuck himself. And XBiz doesn't talk about it, and they tell Bill to go fuck himself. There you go, man. That, my friends, is a real stupid, ignorant motherfucker. Really, it is. Really is. And I mean, once again, this is like factual. Take a look. AVN didn't talk about his show today at all, either did XBiz. And we did. And nowhere in our report did it say don't go to XRCO. We actually uh, talked good about some of the people and hoping that they would win and saying they're the greatest directors. And we get shit on. So I said, this business and the people that are in this business, you can't even win when you try to be nice to people. Seriously, you can't even win when you try to be nice. So what's the point of being nice? What's the point of going, all right, I, I won't be so hard on everybody? What's the, what's the point? What's the point of actually uh, trying to be somewhat nice to people when even when you're nice, they fucking still shit on you? So what is the fucking point? Fuck, man. It's like you do something nice for someone and they shit on you. They talk behind your back. That, that's what it's like. It's just amazing. Fucking amazing. <sighs> Unbelievable. Anyways, 
Uh, I'm going to call Katie Summers right now because we haven't gotten any information from the front line. So let's call Katie Summers right now and see how this is working out and see if uh, the feed's going to be good. Katie Summers, are you there? All right, Katie Summers, this is Rob Black. This is Rob Black's show, and I am here with you, and I am going to present something very special, something very spectacular, something that we like to call the new life that you can use, uh, hosted by Katie Summers. So, Katie Summers, uh, let me just uh, give you a formal one, and don't get all pissy with me. Should we get interrupted uh, by an Axel Braun or a Jeff Mullen update, be prepared uh, for us to take a break so we can get them on the line. Please, don't, and don't be upset, uh, but uh, that could happen. We don't know, but it could happen. Um, it has, uh, they started with the Hall of Fame, uh, so fat-ass Margold is blabbing away. That is what uh, we are being told. Axel Braun just hit me and said, uh, still inducting Hall of Famers. It was inducted first, and that was 20 minutes ago. And I just said, wow, laugh out loud. So I got two reports, and uh, uh, one uh, from uh, somebody that wasn't there, that was there last year, and now from Axel Braun, who's actually sitting there. Axel, I'm talking about. Talk about Axel. Uh, two people. One person. One person who. Uh, yes, two people. All right. So, uh, Katie Summers, give us the news that you can use, and we'll go from there. Go for it. Give give us give us the update. Wow. Okay, so they are going to continue with uh, without Malcolm Young. Wow. Wonder I wonder what he has. Wow. 
Wait, say it again. Pro yeah, he probably has colon cancer or something like that. I who knows? Maybe he's got a fucking brain tumor. So their concept is uh, Hillary Clinton and the Democrats are hired uh, people uh, to go and uh, throw and get a girl that is fucking nuts, uh, that has already spoke uh, out for uh, the uh, the gunman of the Colorado movie theater, and they uh, their their concept is they went to that woman and said we want you to throw a shoe at Hillary Clinton. And why is that? What is their fucking rationale for that? Well, I actually saw footage today, and I saw a shoe go whizzing by her head, and I watched her you know, with one of them ducks where when something happens and you kind of flinch after the fact. I, I, I've seen that today. I, I, I fucking Rush Limbaugh and those Republicans, man. They are just and, – and, but, but more than that, though, Katie Summers, what, I, I, I can only imagine what would be the rationale of why they would think the Democrats would, would plant this. Like, why? What benefit – what, what would this be for the Democrats? That's what I'd like to know. <sighs> just fucking, fucking Limbaugh, man. He's just, again, I, I, I it's just crazy because it really uh, it, it makes it, it really makes no fucking sense. It doesn't. It just makes no sense. But that that's what you get when you uh, when you cross Republicans with talk shows. You get people that make no fucking sense. So uh, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, it's one of those, uh, again, it, it's just one of those, uh, you just listen to, I mean, the shit Limbaugh says is just, he's just, he's just insane. Uh, it really is. He's just insane. 
But uh, again, for for to, for him to try to uh, actually um, to come up with the concept that the Hillary Clinton um, uh, shoe throwing incident is some type of conspiracy that was planted uh, by uh, by Hillary and the people is just just crazy. But anyways, uh, go ahead, continue with some more fucking news because it, it just. I, I could talk about Rush Limbaugh until the cows come home. So, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I don't know. I think you're, I don't know if, how your feed, you know what, let me check your feed. Because I, I put an email in. Uh, and to see if your feed was coming through, but I haven't got any response from that. Are you there? Yeah, I, I think your feed, uh, let me see your feed. I think your feed is still uh, freezing. I, I asked somebody, uh, I emailed your buddy there in the next room, but I never got a response, so I, I have no idea about uh, your feed or if it's coming through or what's happening, uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Let me look at you. Uh, I was just wondering. If, okay, there you are. So far, so good. Your feet. I see in you. You just played. You just moved your tit. You like up, up your tit. So it looks like everything's good so far. All right. I think so. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Go ahead, baby. Continue. Give me something good. Give me some action. Give me all you got. Give me all you got. Give it to me. All right, so that's good. No, I'm trying to see if the fucking if the goddamn feed's lagging. I'm st I'm trying to make sure technically the shit looks good and sounds good. So I finally got a response back on the email, and it said uh, it's not lagging as bad, but it goes out of sync a bit. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. So that that's what I'm doing. Nothing about the award show. Why well, always thought you rebooted it like every time before you went on? Like I, I thought that's kind of what you did, but I guess not. So yeah, after after tonight, reboot do reboot the computer. Definitely reboot the computer, uh, and and do stuff like that. When we get done tonight, 
go, you know, do do your do do your work so you can get done. Uh, and I want to I want to try to get go to go. I want to try to go come home sooner, and I can fuck around with that because I want to try to lower the settings and adjust it because I don't like the shit to not look good. It, it's supposed to be a cool segment. It's supposed to be fucking quality, and if it looks like shit, it fucking annoys me. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we'll go from there, but uh, I'm going to try to not make it lag as much while we're talking, so I think sometimes we, we again, step on each other, uh, but anyways, just don't mind me, just do your thing, and I'm going to sit back here and listen to you, so go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that, that, yeah, it's crazy, it's nuts, the kid's a fucking retard, and I hope the, I hope they put the fucking kid in jail, I do, I hope they put the fucking kid in jail, because it, what he did was fucking horrible, man, uh, anybody who does pranks like that, uh, that, that's equivalent to somebody screaming, uh, uh, fire, fire in a crowded building, uh, and then lighting off stink bombs to simulate the fire. Uh, and then at the end, it's nothing more than stink bombs and a stupid kid screaming, fire, fire. So uh, that motherfucker should be, uh, just seriously, he should be put under a fucking prison for a couple years for doing that. Wow. I'm fucking just whacking dudes, man. Everybody's just out there.
that's pretty, that's pretty funny. So basically, the uh, the fucking dog got called to jury duty. That's fucking, that's classic. So SARS is basically, uh, there's like a thousand SARS samples floating around in the stratosphere right now, and they're lost. Fucking SARS. SARS is lost. Oh, yeah. Well, SARS is is. I remember when SARS was big. Seriously, I remember when SARS uh, was fucking really, really big. So uh, I I remember uh, when SARS was uh, was like like just the biggest thing, man. And um, uh, and people were just uh, crazy. People were wearing masks around, uh, and uh, nobody wanted to get SARS. So uh, the fact that uh, <laughs> that the SARS is lost now in, in the world of who knows, just SARS. Somewhere there's a box of fucking SARS just fucking laying around. Um, that's pretty unbelievable. I love I love the Katie Summers this day in history. Give it to me. Wow, that was the day that Wayne Gretzky is retiring from hockey. 
All right, that's big. That's big news. That's fucking big news. So they gave, uh, they gave, God, uh, they actually gave, uh, what you're saying is, uh, they gave Richard Nixon some fucking pandas. Oh, man. All right. So, fucking pandas. You want pandas. I don't even think you could get... Uh, I don't think you could actually... Uh, uh, I don't think you could get... Or maybe... I don't know. Can... Can... Can, um, can I... Can, can you get a panda? That's okay. I'm going to get you a pet panda. All right, I'm going to get you a fucking panda. How's that? panda. All right, I'm going to get I'm going to get you a panda baby girl. Well, I'm going to get you a fucking panda. That's the bottom line. I'm getting you a fucking panda, and that's what my mission's going to be. All right, you got anything else? It's 10, 10 p.m., baby girl, or are we signing off? All right, go woman power, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have uh, we had a little delay tonight with Katie Summers' feed, but I promise you, 
Uh, tomorrow at noon, it will be 100% fixed. You have my uh, expertise of creating uh, a technical wizardry. It will be fixed tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Because it, it, there was a little delay tonight, Katie Summers, uh, but not as bad. Like, it was fixed from this afternoon, but I'm going to drop it down one frame rate, and we should have a perfect tomorrow. So, uh, again... Uh, it's Katie Summers. Give us your wind up, Katie Summers, and you are the best. And give it to us right now. All right, Katie Summers. It's great to hear from you, and we'll see you later and get your ass working. Au revoir. Goodbye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Katie Summers reporting. And I just got a big report here, ladies and gentlemen. I just got a big report here. Axel Braun uh, officially just won for Man of Steel, ladies and gentlemen. Man of Steel is the winner right now. And didn't I call it? Didn't I call it? Ladies and gentlemen, you motherfuckers, I think I called the winner of her Man of Steel. God damn it. Let's go to our predictions right now. I think Rob Black uh, called that winner. I think Rob Black called that winner, motherfuckers. All right. I'm going to pick Man of Steel. I picked it. Jimmy the Greek here, baby. Jimmy the Greek. All right? I picked it. Man of Steel was the winner. I picked that. You can check right there. Check it. Chalk it up. I am the master. All right. I am getting news. I predicted that. I predict. I picked that. I picked that. I'm. I picked that. I'm telling. Uh, telling the audience. Audience. I pick. I'm telling the. I. And Jeff Mullen won. What did Jeff Mullen win? I picked that. I'm telling the audience. Mullen won what? Mullen won what? Mullen won what? Won what? What? Mullen won. Jackie St. James tweeted Richie Calhoun that he won. What did he win for? Mullen won what? I'm, I'm focused on the people that I'm going to talk to. It, it, did he beat Axel for best parody director? He beat you? He beat you as director? Don't tell me that, Axe. Don't you tell me that, Axie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, trying to get Axel Braun here. Trying to get somebody here. Let's see what we're going to get. Greece won best parody. God damn it. Jimmy the Greek is pulling out the wings. Jimmy the Greek is pulling out the wings. You call it. Rob Black nails it on the whoa head, baby. I'm calling him. I'm calling him left and right, motherfuckers. That's what I do. That's what Rob Black does. Greedy's best comedy parody. That's what Rob Black does. 
I call winners. Okay? I call winners. All right? I call winners. I call winners. All right, come on, Braun. Come on, Braun. Are you ready? Are you ready? Who's ready? Are you ready, big shot? Who I call fucking last. Big shot. Let's go, big shot. I call winners. I call winners. Okay? I call winners. It fucking hurts me how I call winners. All right? It hurts the Rob Black show that I call Winners. Alright. Who, who's getting on the phone with us first, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, that's good water. Winners! Winners! Man, my predictions are fucking awesome. Best parody. Fucking uh, uh, Man of Steel, best parody fucking comedy, Grease. I'm fucking winners, babe. I'm a winner. I need, I need Braun to win director, motherfuckers. I need Braun to win best director, and we got to fucking try Vecta, okay? I, we get to try if we get fucking broad as the... Uh, I, it's hard for me to lose this little belly fat here. If I had a couple thousand, I would get it sucked out. All this, I'm like a fucking rock. Like this. Like a rock. This, not too much. This is soft. Squishy. 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 It's like a little tire tube. Tiny little tire tube. I need that to get sucked out. If I had, I'm telling you, if I had some money, I would get it sucked out. All right? That's what I would do. It would be sucked out. i get it lipo Sucked out. No matter how many uh, uh, crunches and no matter how many fucking uh, uh, lips I do, I can't get rid of this little pooch, this little fucking fat. This, I'm like a fucking rock. I'm like a fucking rock. You can even see the look. You can even see the... The, 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 the lines there, my ad lines. But this, I, I need it sucked out. I need literally somebody to take one of the tubes, stick it in there, and they suck the fat out. That's what I need them to do. They sat out. Like they would suck the jizz from my cock and balls. That's what I need right now. That's what I need right now. Okay? That's what I need. Whew. Getting tired here. Whew. Getting tired waiting for these fucking more results. I told Axel, I said, you want to come on now? Uh, as you won the, uh, uh, the Man of Steel parody, or do you want to wait to see the director of the year parody? What do you want to do? So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I need action here, guys. Okay, I need fucking action. I need action. I need action. And I need the fat sucked out of my belly. I need that too. Okay? I need that. And I, I, I don't have a couple thousand to just throw away on some liposuction, and I can't go to Mexico. I can't go to Mexico. 
Okay, can you imagine if I go to Mexico and I die on the operating table uh, with a tube stuck in my stomach and it's some little Mexican lady sucking the fat out of me? I can't do that. How would that look? How would that look? It wouldn't look good. Okay, it wouldn't look good. It would not look good. Anyways, uh, we're going to sit here for a little bit longer and see if we're going to get uh, any interview, see what we're going to get. Uh, Jesus, can you imagine a fucking award show starts at uh, 8 o'clock and they just start rattling off the fucking names? Unbelievable, man. What a bunch of fucking drools. Man. Anyways, fuck you gonna do? It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. It really is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Oh shit. It is what it is. Wong, fire, Walmart. Fire, Walmart. Bye, Walmart. Best new stud, Tyler Nixon. Ho! Bro, let me tell you guys something. Rob Black, I'm fucking, I'm hitting on all cylinders tonight. I just got that word in from Tom Byer. And leave it to Tom Byer to know who is the best new stud. Ah, uh, Vicky Chase won Best Orgasmic Oral or something like that. Uh, fuck her. I didn't call that. I lost there. Fuck her. Fuck her. And then Katie said Swiney won POV, she thinks. That would be a... Did I call Swine? Uh, I don't think I called Swine. I don't think I called the Swine. Did I call Swine? And I love Kit Kaysen, I think. I said Jules Jordan. I said Jules. I think Swiney's in that, Catherine. Kevin Moore. Mason won Best Director for a non-feature, right? I said Jules Jordan, they gave it to Mason. <laughs> Motherfuckers. All right, I lost there. Mason won Best Director in a non-feature, ladies and gentlemen. Motherfuckers. It's very upsetting. Mason won Best Director in a non-feature. <sighs> All right. All right. Fuck, what was I thinking, man? Uh, what was I thinking? Damn. Why didn't I call? Why, why, how did that slip through my little fucking dago fingers? How, seriously. How did that slip through my little guinea fingers, man? Damn. Fuck, I let you guys down on that. I'm sorry I let you down on that. Fuck. All right. I let you down in that. I'm fucking sorry. Fucking sorry. Uh, think Mason would get on the phone? <laughs> oh, man. All right. I, I let you guys down. I didn't call that. I went with Jules Jordan, and Mason pulled it out. Fuck you guys, man. Damn. Ah. <sighs> God damn, I'm fucking very upset by that. Very upset by that. All right, well, let's see how else I'm. So far, I'm doing good, though. I hit Man of Steel. I hit Tyler Nixon. I hit Grease. Jesus Christ, so far, I'm three fucking winners. Come on, guys. Seriously, come on. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good so far. I'm doing pretty good so far. All right, we know we're going to wind up having to fucking gut this out until the fucking end. Oh, man. Jimmy the Greek I am. Come on. Come on, fuckers. Give me more news.
Come on! Give me action. They're rattling the, the awards off. Let's go! Oh, Kate okay, okay, Summers. Oh, shit. What do we got? Come on. What do we got? What do we got? Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. POV pervert is swine distributed by Jules Jordan. I called that? Are you sure I called that? Did I call it? Are you sure? I'm, I'm getting told that I, that I called swine. Where, where? I don't see that's Gary the idea. Where? Where is it? Come on, motherfuckers. Okay. Um, uh, that's. Nah, man. I, I didn't call swine. I, I said Jules Jordan. Best POV series. I didn't call it swine. Can't change my fucking thing now. Just because it's distributed by Jules, that's not swine. It's not swine. I mean, you could gotta give it a half, but I'm not gonna take credit for that. I'm not gonna take credit for that. I want a full win. That's not. It's like a fucking half win. I ain't going for half win. Okay? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. All right, I guess I did. POV pervert Jules Jordan. Got to go with the little dwarf himself. POV pervert Jules Jordan. Why does it say swine? I called it. If that's what they gave me, pervert is swine distributed by Jules Jordan. If that's the case, then Tom Byron did it wrong when he made this list. Because he says best POV series. POV pervert, Jules Jordan. It's it's not. It's POV pervert. Fucking Tim Von Swine, Jules Jordan. I'll take the win, but I don't consider that a full win because I left out Van Swine. And I, because I say, you got to go with the little dwarf himself, POB pervert, Jules Jordan. Sure. I'll take the win. All right. I'm doing pretty good, guys. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. Is that, is that? I wonder if that's why Bill Margold said I was mocking the award show because I was predicting all the winners. You think that that was what he meant? I mean, what do you think it is? How is it that I'm mocking the award show? This award show has got more attention by us than anything this asshole has ever had. Now, is he take that I'm mocking it because we've announced the winners? Is that why? What do you think? Is that why? I mean, you got to admit, I said uh, Man of Steel, win. I said the Nixon kid, win. I said the priest, win. Uh, I said POV pervert. I said POV pervert Jules Jordan. It's POV pervert Tim Swine Jules Jordan. So that's a 80% win. So far I've missed Mason. And the Vicky Chase, Katie Summers, if you're talking about Vicky Chase, that is the best, uh, I think it says, comeback. I'm seeing comeback. Unsung Siren. If you're saying Unsung Siren is Vicky Chase, uh, I said Mishka Brooks. 
You're and you're saying it was Vicky Chase, so I lost there. Eh, oh well. Oh well. Oh well. Who gives a shit? So I got two. I only go for the big ones. I only go for the big ones. So let's see. Come on! Keep them rolling in, you fuckers! Keep me coming! Keep feeding me! Keep feeding me! I'm like, a, I'm like, I'm back over here. I'm in the Yankee Stadium. I'm in the fucking home run competition. Feed me! I'm fucking jacking up. Hey, I'm gonna lose my fucking internet feed. I can tell right now. My fucking my YouTube is getting ready to shit. Hi guys. Mm. All right, here we go. What's going on? Come on, give it to me. Kung Fu in this motherfucker. I swear to God, Kung Fu will be. Okay? Kung Fu.
Give it to me. Kung Fu starting. I'm getting ready for more Kung Fu. I'm Thank you. 